Hello, Booktube. Uh, this is a book here that needs probably no introduction for a lot of my subscribers. This is The Hobbit. It is the prequel to the Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. And uh, there's not much I need to say about it for most people, but I'll, in case anyone doesn't, hasn't heard of it, basically, uh, it's the children's book that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote in order to introduce readers to his War of Middle Earth. I believe this book came out in the 1930s and Lord of the Rings came out in the 40s and 50s. And I read these books like The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit way back in elementary school. And I'm rereading them now. And I don't remember very much of them, so I feel like it's kind of like reading it for the first time. But what I did remember this one was actually it being my favorite out of all of Tolkien's books. I'd read The Hobbit, I read The Lord of the Rings, and I read some of The Summerland, and I really loved it. And I don't know if I would like Lord of the Rings more or less than this, because my tastes have changed back since then. But I've got to say, I think that it really has hold up. There's very little bad I can say about it. You see, what Tolkien did in this book that's so amazing, I don't think any other children's book has ever done this. He made an extremely complex world that he chooses to guide you through in a very gentle way. Like, the entire time, it's like he's talking to you. He never talks down to you. He looks in a little humor. You can tell it's not an adult book because it's there's nothing really super dramatic, and there's always this uh, silliness he injects in everything, which is in stark contrast to Lord of the Rings, which is oftentimes more serious. But it's really amazing. He was able to make a very detailed world that can incite your imagination and leave you wanting more because you get the impression throughout it that this is just one small part of a much larger world, and yet you're never intimidated by it. A lot of people feel intimidated by Lord of the Rings because there's so many characters memorized and places and backstory. In this book, though, there really isn't much of that at all. There's a lot. There's kind of a lot of characters, but they're all fairly. Some they're all, Tolkien like he tells you about them in this kind of like silly, friendly way. So you're, there's never really anything intimidating. He just presents everything in a way so that I think, maybe if not most children can understand it, a lot of children probably could understand it. The writing here is also beautiful. Now, normally I'm not really a fan of reading anything like a... I normally really only read adult books because that's just <clears throat> the kind of writing quality I normally like. But this is actually one of the few exceptions. It's actually a children's book where the writing is oftentimes on par of an adult book. Now, like I said, the tone of it, it's kind of silly and not very dramatic, means it's not really an adult book. But I wouldn't criticize it for that. It does. It actually has some very interesting, very excellent phrases that all throughout the book. I was surprised at how good the writing is. I think it might even be better than Lord of the Rings, at least just because a lot of people accuse Lord of the Rings of long-windedness, which I don't remember much of yet. But The Hobbit is, as you can see, it's a pretty short book. And yet, they, a lot happened in the book. The character development of the protagonist is excellent because he goes from being this guy in... Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I should explain the story. I didn't explain it first. The story, if you haven't heard of this, although most of you I imagine listeners probably have, is about a, he's a guy from a, a, a fantasy race called Hobbits, they're little short people with furry feet, or hairy feet, and he's recruited by a wizard who's, who goes to his village to participate in an adventure to get the treasure from a dragon alongside a party of dwarves. Dwarves are like these other short, stocky fantasy race. And basically he starts out being this like coward who doesn't want to go on an adventure at all, to slowly but surely become braver and braver, and even a bit more egotistical. You see, what's nice about this is that the book's kind of a subtle deconstruction of heroism. Because none of the characters in the book are really complete heroes. Like, there are good people in the book, certainly, and bad people. But the good people aren't really presented as being perfect. That Like, Bilbo has his own problems with his cowardice, his needing to, um... <clears throat> so sometimes he lets his pride get the better of him. And when he starts realizing, oh, hey, I'm a really good adventurer now. The same thing happens with the other characters, like the dwarves. A lot of the times, the main motivation for the quest is not to do good, it's just to get money. I think there's a subtle construction about the idea of heroes that Tolkien wants you to know about. There's also some subtle moral lessons. I think the overall moral lesson of the book is essentially that sometimes the needs of others have to go before one's own personal glory. Now, I won't spoil the ending of this, but it's not a neat, perfect ending for the people involved. And imagine if you're a child reader, you might be caught by surprise by how it ends. It certainly doesn't end in a particularly glorious way. It ends almost in a very like pragmatic, practical way because of the situation they have to get into. Anyway, I give this book very easy American to five stars. It's probably easily my favorite like children's book that I've read in recent memory. And in, I will say this though, in a certain way, I'm kind of dissatisfied by it because it's not really an adult book. It doesn't have like a huge amount of death. It doesn't have much drama, but I still wouldn't fail to give it five stars simply because it, for what it does have compared to like a children's book and what a children's book would try to achieve is remarkable. It's honestly, I think it's the most brilliantly conceived and executed children's book I've ever read. You have, as I said before, a vast world that's done in a way that it's not at all intimidating. You have beautiful writing, excellent character development, and little subtle moral lessons, and a deconstruction of heroism I think a, ch a child reader could take home from them. So I give this, as I said before, a five-star review, and uh, 
Thank you for watching and have a nice day and make sure to uh, please the YouTube algorithm gods by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And uh, yeah, bye.